Today's new bike day, but this isn't just any new bike. There's a bit of a story behind this one. Let's grab it. If you've seen any of my videos here on YouTube, you probably know that I've got a bit of a BMX background. Well, so does this company right here, Haro. Haro Bikes was founded in 1978 by the father of freestyle, Bob Haro. You've probably heard of Matt Hoffman, Dave Mira, Rick Moliterno. They were all sponsored by Haro in the late 80s and early 90s. And that's cool and all, but I didn't really know about Haro until they sponsored a local guy, Ryan Nyquist, in 1997. I grew up riding BMX bikes right around the Northern California area. So when Nyquist got onto Haro, I immediately took notice of the company. And you couldn't avoid Haro back then because Mira and Nyquist were all over the place, crushing X Games. If you're a mountain biker, you're probably familiar with Greg Minar, Eric Porter, Mick Hanna, Cam Zink. All these guys rode for Haro bikes during the mid 2000s. Since then though, Haro hasn't really done a whole lot with the high-end mountain bike scene, but that's all changing. I've also got more of a personal connection to Haro than just that right there. So I met my friend Doss at the local dirt jumps in Northern California in the late 90s. And then when I was working at Ibis, Doss and I would do weekly group rides together and we road tripped all over California going to mountain bike races. I caught up with Doss a few months ago and he mentioned, hey, I'm actually the guy behind the scenes at Haro Bikes and we could have some really cool stuff coming up. He was mentioning that they had a new hardtail coming out and he thought it'd be really cool to sponsor a video on my channel. So without further ado, let's take a look at the new Haro Saguaro. So yes, I'm honored to say this video is sponsored by Haro. This is a cool looking color. All right, this bike right here is a media sample, so it's not got finished every little last detail and whatnot, but it's a very good example of what the production bikes are gonna be like. Hopefully it comes out. Look at that. All right, we'll get there eventually. Oh, it has the transmission thingy. I've never played with one of those. Sometimes things show up in the ways you never expect they will. All right, let's put this thing together. After more than three months of riding the Saguaro, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on what the bike is and on what it isn't. I even had the pleasant surprise that would really change my overall experience with the bike, but you have to keep watching to find out what exactly happened. I would definitely call the Saguaro a modern aggressive hardtail intended for today's trails and enduro style riding. Now I grew up riding only hardtails, and for the first seven years of my mountain bike journey, I never actually rode a full suspension bike. I always assumed those were just rolling junk shows primarily built for software engineers down in Silicon Valley. But as a child, I was quite the cocky little shit, and I do apologize for myself. Saguaro uses a 140mm travel fork and sports a relaxed 64.5 degree head tube angle. The frame uses size specific chainstay lengths, with all but the large and XL having their own rear center lengths. The small is a mullet, but medium through XL roll on trusty 29 inch wheels. The seat tube angle is steep at 76.5 degrees, but before we get all Texas instruments with these numbers, let's be more clear, the general bike feel is something ready to descend gnarlier trails, yet still quick and nimble feeling. In fact, it's light enough to still laugh at your skinny arm buddy trying to lift his budget full squish onto the roof rack at the trailhead. Just like that same buddy, this thing is no racer, but it's certainly here for a good time. Since this bike is built to be pretty stout, I'm gonna go ahead and swap on my 2.6 tires, and I wanna go ride this thing in some rockier places where the 2.6 tires are gonna help. I've also ridden these tires quite a bit lately and I'm feeling them. So let's make a quick little tire swap. We might check on our free hub and see if we need to uh, go to, oh, we can go to more engagement. We're halfway through the swap already. I am not an old sage of a bicycle mechanic, more of a kitten, as I'm ever curious about how my bikes might ride best for me. Oh, there we go. Okay. In the never ending quest to try all the things, I took both my time and many liberties to set the Saguaro up to best fit my own taste. I immediately swapped off the single ply stock tires for my mega heavy duty 2.6 size tires. 
I am particularly fond of these big tires for hardtail applications. They provide a great amount of float in the rough, plus you don't have any kind of unpredictable rebound for jumpier scenarios. I have a lot of experience with WTB tough casing tires, and I'm happy to lug the 1300 gram carcasses uphill in order to then descend at 22 PSI. I know they will respond exactly how I need them to with traction beneath me rather than applied to my skeleton. I knew I'd have this bike for a while, so I took the time to swap the 36 tooth DT Swiss Star Ratchet over to the 54 tooth. Not a mandatory upgrade, but a fun one, and you can flaunt your upgraded engagement over all the commoners you'll see unable to ride with merely 36 PoE. I may be kidding here, but it's nice to know that no pointless detail is spared. I did battle slightly with the stock bars, I really wanted something taller with more sweep and ideally more compliance. I went with some 1-up 35mm carbon bars and a very stubby 35mm length stem. Otherwise, the bike had a very high-end build with TRP Slate Pro brakes, a SRAM AXS transmission drivetrain, and DT Swiss XM1700 wheels. This thing is solid, very beefy. All the adjustments made. Let's go see how it does on the trails. Cue me, jump on and wheelie away. Hurrah! Short back end, I like that. The switch back up here is a little bit of a local challenge. Let's see if the Saguaro's got it. Kind of big. I had to get fancy, but I made it. First ride on the Haro. Just do a little bit of a shakedown loop, see how everything feels. Oi, that is a long bike. Whoa. Whoa. Holy cow, this thing is peppy. Yonk. Whomp. This bike is fun. It definitely likes to jump that short back end, but man, I gotta do some work on my own end with the handlebar positioning to fit me. Let's get wild. Let's go try out the Haro Saguaro on a ridgetop. Let's do this. My biggest priority is to spend as much time as I can, not on my rear wheel, but on trails that challenge my technical ability, but also have some sort of unknown adventure aspect to them. If that just means not really knowing where I'm at, well, I'll own that. Just before the snow started to fall, I made a trip up to the Cascades to try out a very remote trail, seldom ridden by bicycles. We're seeing a lot of hunters in the first day of deer season tomorrow. I'd seen videos of this trail, but once I did find it on a map, the entire process of avoiding hunting season, a long winding forest service road, and golden larch trees were punctuated by perfect dirt and a gorgeous day. These types of rides are what most keep me out of the house for extended periods of time that forced me to arrive to family functions somewhat late, all sweaty, and still in bike shoes. These are the types of trails I tell my kiddo all about in an effort to try to get her to join me on these trails one day. And these are the kind of rides the Saguaro is built for. On the ride home, I had a brief encounter with an elk, then had to ford a river in the dark to eventually make it over 150 rainy miles home. Now that was a day. Maybe it'll go through, maybe it won't. I don't know. I might actually look at this before I just send it blind right at nightfall. It's gonna be slippery. Yeah, I think I just gotta stand up and hit the gas hard. I see there's a big rock over there. I don't wanna... Yeah, there's a big snag on the left I gotta watch out for. <laughs> oh, my feet are soaked. So I sunk into a hole and I had my traction control wheel slip at level three, but I couldn't move, I got stuck. So I bumped it down to level one and... Got out. Okay, now hopefully this goes where I need to go.
It's important to me that if I discuss a bike here on my channel, that I be fully transparent about it. Well, unfortunately, that first Saguaro that arrived quite simply just fell off. I knew it was a media sample and that a bunch of details were not yet sorted out, but the bike was so long, I was fully struggling to ride. With all that weight on the front wheel, I really couldn't bunny hop, let alone corner. It might work. Trying to maneuver through rough bits of trail was an absolute struggle. Despite being told the bike I have is a size medium, I finally received the geometry chart and with my trusty tape measure, found out that first bike was actually a size large. I measured the wheelbase and I communicated with Haro, this wheelbase is really long. It's longer than my size medium enduro bikes. And we looked at some of the geometry and sizing charts and noticed that the bike I've been riding is actually a size large. I'm only five foot eight. I fit a medium. So Haro went ahead and shipped me a size medium frame. Let's crack it open. Let's see what we got here. Turns out I was riding a size large and even worse, it was made in a different factory than where the production bike was actually gonna be built. This verified medium showed up in the mail was way easier to build up with an obvious improvement in overall build quality. The tubing was more compliant, the cable fittings were much better than earlier versions. I will say, I'm not a huge fan of internal cable routing when not absolutely necessary. Heck, I might even opine this one of the internet's worst contributions to our sport, but that's still a huge improvement over headset cable routing and Haro was smart to also avoid silly headset cables. Nice. Cool. I didn't even notice this bike has under top tube mounts for your tool, your uh, tire plug kit, whatnot. Let's build this thing up, swap down from large to proper size medium. Fall colors, looking pretty good. This is the most fall we've had in years. We had a little cold snap early. Got the color turning. Man, this thing climbs better. No Easier to get through the switchbacks. I can already feel how much better this thing rides than the last bike. The whole bike is way more compliant, smoother. Got way more comfortable. The geometry is so much better too. Oh man, just going to that size medium. Ah, the large worked, but man, medium is what I should be riding. Let's do the rock roll on the old Saguaro. Oh, we're good. Oh, it flies. <laughs> cool. Cool. It jumps way better than I expected. There we go. Over the years, I've generally found that when choosing a frame nice. size on a hardtail, err on the side of smaller. For this kind of bike, more maneuverability is more important than it is on a full suspension. God, the shorter wheelbase feels so much better. With the bike much more figured out, I did my best to take it to a whole bunch more places to really try it out. I have to admit, I'm a bit self-conscious about riding a Haro in a video that includes any kind of jumps or pump tracks. Haro sponsors some of the world's very best BMX riders, and I don't even belong in the same sentence, paragraph, or even book as those people. But I will say that a hardtail does this stuff way better than any kind of a full suspension. And if you're testing a bike, why not test it on all the things? While an actual pump track bike rolling on 26 inch wheels will be far better hammer for the pump track nail, an aggressive hardtail will still pound that pump track plenty, with the added ability of being able to do a lot more than just endless circles. That was so bad. Let's check in one more time on the versatility of this bike. Oh, that's right. You can also take it out on epic backcountry cross-country rides. And when things get oh sideways, my gosh. it'll generally save your bacon. I always enjoy riding a hardtail, but it's really fun when I've got enough time on it to actually feel like the bike is responding to my every little input just as I want it to.
One of the very best parts of riding a hardtail is that it makes easier trails somewhat more challenging. It also encourages riding at a slightly slower pace when descending. They aren't really slow, but they'll be slower than a full suspension. The same hardtail then rewards you with the feeling that you're on a fancy SL-type EMTB on the climbs. Sort of. Being so light and so efficient, if you do spend time on any kind of a heavy enduro bike, it's quite fun to hop back onto the little aluminum hardtail. It's like cheap EPO without the stress of drug testing or any kind of a heavy conscience. Quite the opposite, in fact. When you are shredding on a hardtail, it's best practice to hop and skip over bumps. The shorter back end of the Haro means it's easy to get the bike up and into a bunny hop. A size medium is a ton easier to jump than the old large, and you can see that I'm constantly manipulating this bike over every single obstacle I come over. The rear 29-inch wheel is forgiving when it comes to line choice, providing more traction and rollover than the mullet on my other main hardtail. And wow, going to that cush core is absolutely worth it on the hardtail. Between the cush core, the 2.6 tires ran at low pressure, and the carbon 1-up bars, the Haro treated me well, better than I ever expected for an aluminum hardtail. It might be an ever so slightly firmer ride than the Santa Cruz Chameleon, but it's also a way beefier bike designed for much more aggressive descending. For my kind of riding style and where I live, I do think the Haro is better suited for my uses. I had the most fun on the Haro on either blue or single black rated trails. Yes, the bike can do some doubled black stuff, but it's still a hardtail. You've got less margin for error, and when you're a middle-aged dad, that's something you gotta keep in mind. Its sweet spot is on the type of trails that are often most prevalent, stuff that's not crazy, but is still technical and is always a lot of fun. Now at the end of more than three months riding the Saguaro, I've really fallen in love with this thing. It's not a slow bike, and it still keeps so much fun on the table. The easy wheelies are, as you all know, a personal favorite. That's due in no small part to the 2.6 rear tire and that 29-inch rear wheel. The size medium wheelbase is spot on for all of this. It's short enough to be nimble and fun, but long enough to be confidence-inspiring and stable. And the color. In real life, I really like the look of this thing. It's kind of like a lavender that is somewhat subdued, but still stands out compared to traditional mountain bike colors. Instead of those bright bikes that scream, look at me, it's more of simply uttering, hey there, I'm slightly different, but not too weird. You don't have to stare. I wonder how hard it would be to gap that. I've done it. You have? Mm -hmm. Just a big pull? Pretty big pull. It's not that long. As we're riding down the trail, went over this roller and was like, oh look, there's another jump, but it looks like you could almost gap both of them. And then Logan said he's done this gap before and said maybe you could do it on the Haro Saguaro. So why not a trail challenge? Let's see if the hardtail can carry enough speed through the switchback before this and then get enough boost to the bunny hop to make it to backside. It's hard to tell on video, but this is actually a roller to a little tabletop or, you know, a 15 foot long double. If you guys think the Haro Saguaro can make this double, scroll on down and hit the subscribe button. If you don't think the Saguaro can do it, Scroll on down, hit the subscribe button. All right, let's go do it. Oh. It looked easy. <laughs> well, on a Haro Saguaro. <laughs> uh, it's so cheesy, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. That's cool. I'm so glad that rhymes. If this were my personal bike, I'd probably upgrade to a mechanical drivetrain and to my personal favorite brakes, but neither of those changes would be in a huge hot hurry. Those are just personal preferences. The stock Transex dropper seat post has been fine. Now I do have a big hop in the DT Swiss rear wheel, but they still ride just fine. It's hard to say for certain how this aluminum bike compares to a steel one. The light overall weight is really nice, and while it's likely a tad firmer ride, the bike's willingness to get airborne and over obstacles is an extremely valid trait. I'd say the difference between the two frame materials is less noticeable than the difference between running a cush core versus a traditional tire setup. And for what it's worth, my Chromeg Stylus rides similar to the Suguaro, if not a bit harsher. Both bikes are certainly heavy duty, and for more compliance while seated, it'd be best to look for a different genre of bike entirely. Ideally, something that uses a slacker seat angle. But I'll leave that for retirement age. As for now, I like the extra fun factor of these more aggressive rigs. <laughs> try again. Try, try, try again. It's okay. Look at this muddy guy. What? Look what he's doing for you guys. Look at this. <laughs> I'm actually pretty comfortable right now. <laughs> you have so many new freckles. <laughs>
I really appreciated the Fox 36 Grip 2 fork on the Saguaro, and I did experiment with some longer travel settings. However, I don't know what the frame is officially rated for, so you're on your own if you do want to go longer travel. Huge thanks to Haro for sponsoring this video. I really hope they let me hold on to this bike for a bit longer, as I'm absolutely still enjoying it. I didn't know that'd be the case at first, but that was a very pleasant surprise to find out that first bike had absolutely nothing to do with this one you see here. Also, big thanks to both Riley and Logan for filming and for riding this bike all over Washington, BC while putting this together. If you guys did enjoy this video, I'd love to ask for your kind subscription. It's free and it'll probably help me out. And let me know in the comments if you're also a hardtail connoisseur. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Remember, peace and wheelies.